SDS2 Connect can design shear plate connections skewed or perpendicular for flat or sloping elements and connect to vertical or sloping columns. There are several setup options which will affect the outcome of the designed shear plate connections. The first options are in the schedule of minimums for single plate shear connections. This will determine the minimum bolt diameter, plate thickness, and rows of bolts to be used in single plate shear connections. These options can have different settings based on the nominal depth of beam being connected. In standard fabricator connections, under shear plate, you will find settings for vertical and horizontal edge distances. Per AISC, a 1.5 inch minimum is required. We can choose the standard hole type to be used in shear plates as well as gusset shear plates. Shear plate alignment determines on which side of a beam's web shear plates are attached when at both the start and end of the beam. Keep shear plate symmetrical Create shear plates so that the column of holes is centered on the plate. Cope on connections that extend past flange will cope shear plates in a beam to beam framing situation when the shear plate is extended past the flange. Cope extended shear tabs to reduce beam cope will cope shear tabs that are extended to both flanges of the supporting beam. Extend connection and cut flange flush will cut the flange of the supported beam flush to the web and extend the shear plate to accommodate another row of bolts if required. Combine beam and vertical brace shear tabs will cope the beam flange and extend the shear plate to connect the brace gusset plate in a beam column brace connection. Skew holes in plate create shear plates with bolts that run parallel with the edge of a supported sloping square cut beam. The minimum thickness option above applies only to splice plates and moment shear plates. It does not apply to single plate shear connections. Their minimum comes from the schedule of minimums discussed earlier. Let's take another look at the schedule of minimums for single plate shear connections. As an example, I will look at a connection that I currently have in this model. We can see for a W18 beam, we get three rows of bolts. So if I open setup and look at the schedule minimums for single plate shear connections, I can see that the minimum number of rows is currently set to 3. I will increase this to 4. Now if I simply edit the connection and click OK to force it to be re redesigned, we can see the number of rows increases to Four. When editing connections, connection specifications will contain different options to determine shear plate grade, side, support condition, etc. Attach T slash plate 2 determines if the shear plate is bolted in the shop to the supported beam or welded in the shop to the supporting element. To show this, I will look at a beam framing to a column web. I can see in this case that the shear plate is attached to the column I know this because SDS2 Connect copes the bottom flange of the beam for erection purposes. 
In the connection specifications, I will edit and change the attach T plate option and set this to support TED. We can see that we get designed a little different connection without the cope in the bottom flange of the beam because it is no longer required to be erected. Back in connection specifications, the shear T plate side determines if the shear plate is on the near or far side of the supported beam's web. A setting of automatic lets SDS2 connect determine which side the plate is on based on the shear plate alignment option in standard fabricator connections. Support condition determines whether a single plate shear connection is designed for rigid or flexible support. The definition of a rigid support can be found in the design calculations cover sheet which can be obtained from SDS2 and is not part of the AISC procedure which states the rigidity of the support is left up to engineering judgment. If automatic is selected, SDS2 Connect applies the choice made to always base shear tab design on flexible support condition found in setup under design criteria. Again, in connection specifications, extend past flange will design a shear plate that extends past the toe of the flanges of the supporting beam or column when framing to the web. This eliminates coping or flange thinning that might be required. The next option we will look at is stiffener opposite. To do this, we will take a look at a beam to beam framing situation. The option for stiffener opposite will provide a stiffener on the opposite side of a supporting beam's web. This only applies when the option extend plate size 2 is set to something other than as required. The stiffener that is created then matches the depth of the shear plate. The next option to look at is try two bolt column shear tabs. This attempts to design a shear plate with two columns of bolts instead of one. The option Combine Plates allows users to override the option for combining beam and vertical brace shear tabs mentioned in setup earlier. Skew Holes and Plates also allows users to override the option for this mentioned in setup. Use Backup Bar, if set to Yes, will design a backing bar for shear tabs when the angle between the supporting and supported beams is less than 45 degrees. A setting of Automatic applies the default. Since there is no setup option for this in SDS2 Connect, the default is Yes. If the model was imported from SDS2, that could be different. So to take a look at the backing bar that is provided by SDS2 Connect, take a look at a framing situation of an angle, and on the back side we can see the backing bar that is provided.
The last option to take a look at is a through shear plate. Through shear plate will create a shear plate running through the walls of a tube column. If beams are framing to the opposite sides of the column, and this is checked for both connection nodes, SDS2 Connect will share one plate for both connections. We can see we have a framing condition where this will be possible. So edit a connection node and simply check the through shear plate checkbox. In this case we get one through shear plate for each beam. I will edit the connection on the opposite side of the tube and again check through shear plate and now I have one shear plate being shared for two connections. Additionally, if a third beam is framing perpendicular to these beams, designed through plates will not interfere with each other. Thank you for watching the Shear Plate SDS2 Connect tutorial.